for joining me tonight. We are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. Uh, we are working on the winter flower block, which is all English paper piecing. Got all the pieces, little template pieces in there. We are this far and we have a little bit of the next section started. So we're gonna be continuing on that today. I'm hoping to finish the center section of this. So it's slow going, it is English paper piecing, which means a lot of little hand stitching, but that's what makes it relaxing and, and just nice to work on. So thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together here. So I'm on location again at my parents' house. So I'm only on YouTube again tonight. I'm usually on YouTube and Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Central. And uh, I'll be back on Monday again on both at both places. So. Uh, if you like facey pages better, then you can uh, um, bump back over there <laughs> on Monday. So, all right, you guys, let's get going on this. Hey, hey Darlene, thanks you guys for joining me again. Uh, all right, English paper piecing, let's, let's go here. Okay, back at it here. Okay, so this is how far we got last night. So here's the winter flower block. Uh, and then this section here would be like the center flower bit plus uh, these little kind of like arms coming off of it. So we got half of that center flower. We're doing it in that cream versus this pretty dark blue. Uh, and we got two of those spokes coming off. I would like to finish up the other half and ideally sew it together tonight too. So we have like our whole center plus a little edge there. Um, and then these these little inserts here, I suppose these little diamonds with the triangles. Those will wait till next time, so, uh, but I think we can get pretty far on this. So we've already gotten this section started here. Um, all we have to do is insert this piece and then uh, uh, I was gonna start the next three pieces. Um, I'm gonna do the glue basting tonight for these since we did thread basting. Uh, so we have to temporarily hold these cardboard pieces down, these little like folder, manila folder pieces. So we uh, thread basted with, you know, the thread just holding down the corners. Uh, we can glue baste as well. And I think we did that for, yeah, we did it for this one here. We glued it down. Um, I have to re-glue parts of it down, but uh, I think we'll do that tonight. Just, you know, cause this can be tough on the hands for sure, for absolutely sure. Uh, I'm gonna fold the, these right sides together on that first angle. Um, but yeah, this can be tough on the hands. So definitely have like a, a wonder clip nearby to clamp them together, hold things in place so you don't have to like, grip. So like this, it's this pinching motion for me, like right in here. So um, this having the clip there kind of allows me just to relax my hand a little bit more and I have to actually practice relaxing my hand uh, doing this. Um, let's grab some thread. I'm gonna grab a bunch of it again. Uh, but yeah, I think the glue method might work a hair better if you still want to give this a go and it's sensitive on your hands. I'm going to run this through the thread conditioner first before getting it on the needle. Just add that little coat of wax, basically. Strengthen up the thread and so it doesn't doesn't twist up as much in theory, hopefully. This is that thread conditioner from Wisecraft Handmade. And this is the rainfall one. I'm borrowing my mom's. All I brought was the fabric and the book and I'm borrowing everything else. <laughs> All right. So let's do our knicker knot at the beginning here. That I mean, you could just go through this beginning spot two or three times in the same spot really, but uh, we got going with this knicker knot a little while back and I kind of love it. So, all right, I'm just gonna go around once. Well, we're just gonna let that little edge dangle there. I don't need to tie a knot. And all right, so I'm gonna go through, but like halfway with the needle. And uh, so I have the thread that's connected to the eye of the needle. And then there's the thread that's coming out of the fabric here. So the part that's with the eye of the needle, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna go from the front to the back around the needle. And then I'm gonna take the other thread, the part that's on the um, 
fabric, connected to the fabric, I'm gonna go the other direction. And uh, then we're gonna pull through and it's gonna create, you can kind of see this, this knot, this figure eight happening. That's our knicker knock. So we're just gonna keep pulling and uh, that should be a pretty secure knot now holding, holding that in place. I was talking to Jenna. Uh, some of you may know Jenna. She um, might be answering your emails and she'll be, uh, she ships all your packages to you and stuff and she pops in here. Um, we were talking this morning and how it's just fun to say Nick or not. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a good enough reason uh, to, and in my book to, um, to use it. <laughs> so I, I like it. It was fun to year, learn. It definitely makes a nice knot at the beginning there. It's good. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Marie. Nice seeing everyone pop up over here on, on YouTube. All right, cruising along, stitching this. Oh, spoke too soon. Got caught on the side. Ooh, and I got my little beginning thread stuck in here. So I'm just doing that whip stitch around the edge. So I actually think it's, this is this part, the whip stitch is a little bit more difficult when you glue base, because I think when you glue base, you can really get those nice sharp edges. Like you really fold that fabric just right over that edge, but that actually kind of makes it a little tough to grab with the floss sometimes. All right, so now I'm at that like center point. I'm gonna do a knicker knot again, just to, to to uh, secure that. Um, all right, so again, the part connected to the eye of the needle, I'm going forward around the back from left to right, and then the part connected to the fabric, I'm going from right to left around back into the front again. And you can actually kind of do that in the same motion. I'll try and do that with the next one. So, all right, I'm gonna switch directions here now. This is kind of the goofy part of English paper piecing. It's you're dealing with a lot of Y seams um, so this is a Y seam when you have like three pieces coming together like this and it kind of forms a Y. So to get these two pieces right sides together, I kind of actually have to fold this. Uh, don't worry about that if you have to do that because that's like mechanically you're going to have to. <laughs> All right, so I'm just matching up these edges. Let's get that one clip on because that wants to pop apart because this is like spring loading it. It wants to pop. You can see it's trying to it's being open right there, and that's where we're gonna do this knicker knot again. Just on the, I'm just on the other side of that bit. So I think I can, I think last night I was figuring out you could do this with like one kind of motion. So around back, and then my hands in the middle here, I can just grab that and go around back too. There we go, yeah, I'm getting that knicker knot a lot better. All right, so now that, the, that center piece should be secured on both both sides of that point and we can just go on to the end here and that'll be it for this piece ah thanks Sylvia <laughs> and uh, we will glue base those other three pieces so we're gonna make one more of these like three segments the segment of three pieces then we'll put those two together and we'll basically get the other side of this and then we'll we'll do the two together and just go right down that line. That'll be, I'd love to get all that done tonight yet. That's kind of a lot for tonight, but we're already cruising. And I think, um, I actually think that glue basting is gonna speed things up a hair too. Feeling good. I'm liking that sound of the thread going through there. That is a good relaxing sound. Like at the end of a long day, just hearing that thread go through the fabric. I like it. All right, so I think, um, well, I can get two more stitches in there, I think. All right, now, now this will be the last one. We'll get that knicker knot right on this corner. Let's try and do that pretty motion with it again. Like swoop this way and this one swoops that way. Ha, yep, that's getting pretty. 
All right, uh, so let's, I'm just gonna tuck in my edge and the seam allowance here, uh, and we can call it a day on that. Snip that thread, I'm using that giant scissors for that. Uh, let's remove our wonder clip, and now we can like release, uh, you know, that side that we were bending quite a bit. And there we go, that's um, our next piece. So in theory, we could stitch that to this one right now, but I thought it'd be maybe easier to make another like halvesy segment like this, and then we'd only be stitching like one long line um, versus this where we'd be like stitching like from here to there. Um, so I think we'll just leave this one as is and start our next one. Okay, we already pre-cut our, this is our B piece. Okay, I'm putting the right side up right side or the wrong side up I mean uh, and I need the last two a pieces so here's one I got all my pieces hanging out here yet a whole pile of them um, so the hole in the middle is for later um, let's see if I can find a pin well you can take a needle or a pin later and um, you know later we're gonna have to take all these fabric pieces out and it's gonna be tough to like dig underneath the seam allowance and get it. So with this, with the hole in here, we can just stick like a sturdy pin in there or like our stiletto or something and then way more easy, easily pop that out. So um, having hole punching those little holes in there, uh, that'll be helpful later. Okay, this looks, looks like our B piece. This is our last B piece. Oop, flip that around. I need another A piece right here. Okay, so this is what we have left. We gotta do all these puppies yet. Um, all the little baby ones. Okay, let's glue baste. Let's, let's, uh, let's do this guy first. So I just have some like water, like solid, solid, soluble glue, just basically, you know, a normal little glue stick. Uh, like a, just a washable like school glue. And uh, I'm going to, Let's see, should I put it on the fab on the I think I'm gonna put it on the fabric. I think I remember doing it that way. So I'm putting just on the edge of the fabric here. Oh, I know why I'm doing that. I'm putting it on the edge and not right up against the fold because the fold is what we have to stitch through. So I don't wanna like get tons of glue there. So I'm just going on the edge here. We're gonna fold that over. There we go. We can go all the way there. Oops, I'm Need to keep my hand on there. All right, then we're gonna rotate around. Get the glue going. And you know, at wider angles, we're still gonna have to like move the fabric out of the way a little bit. We got this little, little bitty angle here. So this is kind of the part that was coming off on the last one that I glue basted, but that's fine. We can always add a dab of glue later to it. We're not at that part of sewing that together yet. Wait, I'm kind of making a bit of a mess here though with the glue. Maybe that's why I switched, switched back to the thread for the thread basting for the other ones. This will still work. Funny right there. Oh no, that's that looks fine. All right, last bit. I'm gonna do the A pieces right away as well. We'll do the whole thing glue basted tonight. I always feel a little weird using glue, but I'm warming up to it for sure because it just makes things so much faster and easier. So, all right, there's our first piece. It does look, I think, a lot crisper than when we were doing it with just um, the thread basting, and that took like half the time too. I was gluing it here, so. Uh, those are benefits for sure. All right. All right, let's uh, do this feller. Let's do this long piece first, maybe. Get some glue along the edge. So this is like, this glue will come off later. So I'm not worried about like permanently gluing anything anywhere.
Ah, did you guys see uh, the Chad Kitty photo from tonight? Oh, Paula's wondering if the glue will still hold a month later. Um, well, possibly not. So if you are planning on, uh, you know, basting a whole bunch of these and then just letting them sit and then uh, gradually putting them together, yeah, it might be better to do it in batches. I'm not concerned about this in particular because we're going to be kind of sewing it together. And yeah, it's already kind of coming apart here, but I can always... It's still kind of being held. I can always re-glue that part a little bit. I'm going to have to, um, but that shouldn't take too long. We'll see, I suppose. We'll see how... Um, how these pieces do but once they're sewn in like I don't have to worry about the glue coming off here or here because it's already sewn um, nothing's gonna be enclosed yet though like nothing's gonna be fully surrounded on this block yet that's when you can actually pull the papers out so we won't get to that point yet tonight Ooh, get that glob, glob of glue oops well now I'm getting it everywhere all right I suppose that's a negative <laughs> getting glue everywhere but this is this is feeling a lot less fumbly than the thread basting for me right now I think you know if I was thread basting like 20 of the same shape like if they're all hexagons and certain shapes are a bit easier to thread base when they have the obtuse angles like a like a hexagon would I, I think that's a little bit easier for thread basting than like these big sharp angles But I think, you know, I'd get the knack of it and it'd get, it'd get quicker and less clumsy. But right now we're doing it this way. I do think tonight this will make things go faster. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how, um, how it goes if this, if this holds well uh, once we pick this up next month. Oh, Chad was spoiled today again and got to come inside. I had a meeting earlier today uh, and I I was in my dad's office uh, at the house here and I saw him. Chad's an outdoor kitty. So uh, he is a work cat where he is like a farm cat like who's meant to hunt animals and that sort of thing. So he's perfectly fine being outside but I saw him come from the the woods today and run up to the door so we could watch people TV through that through the small window at the bottom of the door comes from wherever he's coming from and watches himself some people TV All right we're done with the glue cover that up all right we have our pieces ready to go again here um, uh, how do they go together again? Oh, the long pieces go together. I, I was going to sew them together like that, but that is not right. It is these long pieces. So let's um, put those right sides together. And then again, this guy will fit right into there. And then we'll get this guy back and um, the long pieces go together. Oh, Sylvia says, I do this project when I'm traveling or not using the machine. And the, oh, the glue stick always dried. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I would definitely say that if you're thinking it's not going to last, go with the thread basting. And, you know, that's going to be permanent until you decide to cut those threads sort of thing. So, yeah, I think if I was doing this as a long-term project, um, you know, kind of like my leader and ender quilt, if I knew I was going to be doing the thing for ages and it was just going to be my chill project... Um, I'd probably thread baste it. Although, I don't know. I think, um, other people might say differently. I don't know. I know, I know people like their glue for sure. So I'm not sure. There's something just so hands-on feeling about the thread basting. It's a little magical. So I do, I do kind of like... In my brain the thread basting but I have been warming up to the glue over the past uh, few years for sure all right all right now I already forgot where I'm going here okay these long pieces here 
Oops. Blah. All right, let's line these up. So now this with the glue, like I was kind of saying, it's my edges are tighter against the paper, which makes them nice and sharp and clean, which is great. But I'll probably be stabbing the edge of this paper a little bit more than I'd like, um, which is fine. It'll still come off, but um, that's kind of the deal. So I'm moving our, the little flappies out of the way and let's start at the beginning and do our knicker knot. Yeah, I suppose that's the beginning. So I do have a little glue here. It's a little heavy in the glue, so <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get all over my needle there. All right, now the knicker knot. Okay, bottom and the top. <laughs> fancy fingers now that I got it figured out I'm actually impressed that I remembered how to do that um, I couldn't remember what it was called <laughs> you guys had to help me out with that that it was the knicker knot uh, but I'm surprised um, surprised I had enough like muscle memory <laughs> to remember to remember that because it's been a while since we've done an English paper piecing project like this, I feel like. I don't know, I can't remember the last time we did it. I know we've done them. But yeah, it's been a while. Yep, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I am hitting that paper, I can feel it. So I'm just trying to slide up and grab just the fabric there. going pretty speedy though. Happy with this. I think we got plenty of time to finish up this center area. If we do have a little time left, I might consider at least cutting the fabric for the rest of the pieces because then I can at least keep the project stuff together and then I can put the fabric back. Um, I like to just have the project done. Yeah, this is a nice craft when you have time to fill for sure. This, like, I feel like this is comparable to comparable to embroidery as far as like travel crafts. It's just you don't need much, um, and you can kind of just open your bag and pull it out and work on it while you're in line and won't bother anybody. All right, I'm feeling good about the stitching tonight. I'm I'm finally feeling comfortable. See, that's the thing. Like we, though, that's the one problem about like us working on a different project every week. It takes me like two days to like get my groove uh, with whatever it is, and like now I'm feeling like, ooh, yeah, let's go. We got this, and we're we're gonna be switching projects again. So next week, speaking of that, next week we're gonna be starting the embroidery of the month, which is the fuzzles and the scrappy. Uh, embroideries. It is that couching technique. Uh, or let's do that knicker knot. Um, I think that'll be fun. I think you'll really like the couch, the couching. It's just kind of a fun technique and you can really do it with all sorts of different materials too, which we'll go over a little bit of that. I think it'll be fun. All right, done. Open that guy up. He's looking good. All right. Um, and then this guy fits right in here and I'm going to do that thing where I just, I just, um, leave my thread. I, I cut myself enough that I'm just going to jump to the next spot. I need to stitch. Oh, look, it's already coming apart there. So, yep. I don't know. I think glue basting when you know you're going to use the stuff right away, but if you're in it for the long haul, then thread basting might be, be the way to go. It just needs to hold long enough for us to just get get it started getting together here. Okay, let's put the clip underneath here. All right, I think this looks good. I'm gonna have to kind of move some of these pieces out of the way. All right, where'd my piece end up? Oh, right in the middle there. So I'm gonna just leap over to this side here. I think we'll go through once and then do our knick knicker knot again. 
kind of like just doing that starting loop. All right, around back and around back. I like it. I'm still pretty excited about that knot. <laughs> uh, feels a little magical. This is what I like. This is the part. All these little whip stitches. This is the part where I, I feel like I just start to relax and it feels like putting on a binding and I like putting on bindings of a quilt. So feels like that. You don't have to really think but you still need to focus. I like it. body's busy but your brain can just chill out. Oh, keep getting my thread caught on the corner. Uh oh, did I get a different stitch? Oh look! <laughs> I got a stitch earlier caught on on the uh, corner and I stitched with it. You know what, I'm gonna just grab it with with this thread and we're gonna just kind of tack it down as we go here I think. We're gonna quilt this whole thing. I don't think that's gonna be end up being a problem. There's plenty of other stitches in here. Funny, it just blended in and I didn't see it. All right, geez, this is almost done. After this, after um, this seam here, all we have to do is, oh, I guess we have to put these together first. I was thinking, all we have to do is sew the, up, the, up the line, but we gotta put the two together yet. All right, let's that, do that center knicker knot. Um, over and over the other way. Okay, separate ourselves and now we're gonna do that Y fold. Ooh, I'm a little, little off here. Let's see if we can jigger that together again. All right, so I'm gonna have to kind of fold this side, try and match this edge. little fumbly with these smaller needles and threads. All right, let's do a knicker knot over here. I like doing that knicker knot at every every kind of angle change. I think that's helpful. There's gonna be a lot of pressure on those angles, so having a knot there versus just some loops makes me feel good. Like I'm trying to hold it together. I can tell my thread's getting shorter. It's not quite to the point where I always pull it off the end, but we'll get there. I think I'll, I'll get a new piece of thread to start the next part where we sew these together. Almost there. The sturgeon fishing starts tomorrow. That's kind of why we're uh, we're in town. Besides visiting, since everyone's got their vaccine now. Well, not John and me, but mom and dad and grandpa. Um, it's sturgeon spearing. Uh, <laughs> So John's, I think I talked about this, John's going out to 
film grandpa and my uncle and dad and stuff. We're gonna film some sturgeon fishing. So today was set up and we just looked at some of their photos and videos and it's just so such a fascinating thing. Uh, all right, here we go. I'm I'm pretty stoked about um, what they shoot tomorrow. I'm staying inside. <laughs> all right, I think I have enough thread on here that we can actually do this stitching. So let's, all right, I kind of ended up here. All right, so let's put these edges together. All right, uh, we're just, let's do this edge. I think I'll maybe have enough thread. This is maybe a bad idea, but we're gonna give it a go. Oh, I missed, I missed that last comment, sorry. Um, but I've never kind of seen the sturgeon prep before. I've just kind of heard about it. And, you know, seen photos of my family forever doing doing the sturgeon fishing and everything. Um, and heard about it and all that, but never kind of seen it. So, oh, I didn't really do this well, I don't think. Let's just go around there again. Um, ugh, weird. I don't know what I did here. Let's do another nick or not. Um, but it's just fun to see their footage of putting up the shanties and cutting holes in the ice. Oh, oh, it took your kids to a small to a storyteller who quoted a story of called King Pite about a sturgeon. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> it's pretty fascinating. I mean these suckers are like freaking dinosaurs though. These these um and in that sense it's like, man, you all y'all are going out and killing these dinosaurs, but like they've some of these are over a hundred years old, like literal fish <laughs> are over 100 years old. It's insane, it's just crazy. And they're, they're monsters, they're like, you know, can be like five feet big or just crazy. So it'll be interesting if they see one tomorrow. But just being out on the lake and it's just like endless white and it's been just so clear and beautiful out and Beautiful means clear. It's been um, like negative 10 degrees sort of stuff. <laughs> so it's not warm. You gotta wear all the clothes, but it's just a neat, a neat deal. I hope, um, is this on one of the Great Lakes? No, it's on um, Lake Winnebago, which is the largest freshwater lake besides the Great Lakes. So it's, um, Biggest lake in uh, Wisconsin. But it's just, it's pretty, re it's very, very restri restricted um, sturgeon fishing. Uh, so uh, this is like the one, all, one of the only places you can do it legally and it's just this short amount of time and you have to, you know, buy your license and your allowed like one fish and so it's it's first of all you don't even know if you're gonna see a fish because it has to literally happen to swim past the hole that you drilled um, and this this isn't really a, a, a drilled hole it is a chainsaw that looks like you're gonna cut down like you know a redwood tree is kind of what I was saying earlier like it looks like a huge chainsaw and they're cutting that into like these I don't know, 13 inches of ice or whatever, and then cutting out like a, I don't know, maybe like a two by four foot rectangle or something. Uh, so it's it's not a just a little drilled hole. Oh, you rode across Lake Winnebago in a car in the ice 50 years ago. Yep. <laughs> it looks scary to me too. That's That's the deal. Yeah, so there's all these trucks like, F-150s and stuff just with their um, shanty trailers on the end and just rows of rows of them and there's cracks in the ice so they have to put up these bridges. Oh man, it's it's a whole pile of shady if you ask me and it, you know, there's there's people that, trucks that fall into the ice every year so I don't know. But it's huge here. It's just a big tradition and generations and generations and it's just kind of a fascinating world. So I'm excited that we're here for it. Um, John has his camera and 
he, he brought the drone too, and um, they're doing that. Do they still put metal plates across? So on the, we saw some of John's video and it, it looked like they had some sort of like metal plate. It's, it's basically like put some two by fours down, but they're metal <laughs> is what it looks like. Uh, wherever there's a crack and then they're like, okay, there's a crack here, everyone. Oh, and the, the other thing that I think is really fun. So these fishing clubs on the lake, they collect everyone's Christmas trees and then they take the Christmas trees and they mark, uh, they use them, these old Christmas trees to mark the road, like where, where people should be driving, like the main road. I mean, there's not really a road, but like they try and guide people out there. Um, so, you know, they don't fall through the ice in a big crack. <laughs> uh, so, so there's kind of like markers every 10th of a mile or something from one side of the lake to the other. And it's like 11 miles wide, the lake. Uh, anyway, it's all so interesting. I love it. Uh, it's just, I love all those like kind of niche worlds. I think it's just so cool. Just fascinating. So we're here for it this, this weekend. All right, I'm doing my last knicker knot here and I'm definitely getting the new thread, but that, that worked out great. There we are, looking pretty. Okay, we have our two halves. So now our main goal is just to kind of line up the ends and line up that center, I think. Oh, it's pretty. Okay, so let's fold them together, I suppose. I'm gonna start by just lining up the ends. And I suppose we're looking pretty good in the center right away. So when, when we get there, I think what's gonna help really getting the uh, center is, you know, going, making sure we're getting all the way to the end and tying our knicker knot and then jumping across and doing another another uh, knicker knot right there and then going to the end. I think, I think we'll all be lined up just fine doing it that way. So I am gonna throw a clip in at the end here. Fun. All right, let's grab some thread. We're definitely going to have tons of time to cut the rest of this fabric, so that's great. This whole, um, this whole project so far uh, is going a lot faster than I thought. So in my head, <laughs> in my head, uh, this English paper piecing was a lot slower stitching than what, what we're doing here. So that's, that's good. Speeding along here. Ooh, that's such a good smell, that thread conditioner. Alrighty. Okay, starting over here. I wonder if I should put a clip in the middle too. I think I might, because this just feels like it's kind of working a little hard to be lined up. Let's, let's just throw a clip like right here. All right, we'll move that eventually, but for now that's good. All right, knicker knot time at the corner. All right, around and around. That's feeling good. I did not think we'd get this far. I mean, especially after, you know, it took forever to just get the template pieces going. But like I said, during when we were working on the template pieces, I think I probably chose the longest, like the, the longest technique to do that. <laughs> but we were already in it, so. I think if I would have um, just photocopied the shapes four times, because they there's four segments of each. Um, oh, and then eight times for the this A piece. I think uh, I could have just 
glued that to my cardboard and then just cut right out on the line. Oh man, I almost feel like we should have just stopped what I was doing and, and done that. If the photocopier was literally right next to me, we would have just bailed on the way that I did this, which was trace each one and uh, just printed out that paper and glued it on. And that just sounds like that would have taken 10 minutes tops, whereas this took like an hour. I'm sure there's even faster ways than that, too. Ah, well. I'll have to keep that in mind for next time. Okay, so all of these little long pieces, they're gonna be totally fine. Just for now, I'm flapping them out of the way. But you can, we can see how they all lay after, after I'm done stitching this. And once we press it, I mean, it's just gonna be like any other seam allowance. Although I kind of feel like we might have done this before where I actually trimmed the seam allowances really nice, but that can't be true because it seems that seems like a weird step for me to have done. So this is probably how we've been doing it. It's been a while, like I said. All right, so what I want to make sure that I'm doing right here is getting to that center line and getting that knicker knot so we're good and centered here. So, I don't know, maybe two more stitches. I want to really pull that center together. All right, Oop, pop that guy off, I guess. I'm gonna try and get the knicker knot here. And actually, it's feeling like I like really need to suture it together there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the same spot here and now I'm gonna do the knicker knot. I kind of wanted to pull it together. It felt like a little bit more. So I put an extra loop in there. Ugh, get around there. Okay, all right, that feels secure. Um, let's do the same, let's jump over the, the center point now and um, still shushing that fabric out of the way and let's do our second knicker knot on the points of this other side. Kind of get in here. And I feel I should at least get a stitch close to that one. Feels like a spot that should be doubly secured. Home stretch. Oh, thought that was gonna happen. Keep my thumb on there. Ooh, that's, that one's hard to, I think I went through a little paper here. That one was a little tough. I'm gonna loop around this fabric piece again. I think I can get rid of that guy. And I'm getting awfully close to pulling this off again, so I'm gonna pull the thread a little bit um, so that tail end is a little longer. I feel like when that gets too short, that's when I accidentally pull it out. Maybe about 
eight more stitches. We'll have to come back in summer again so I can take more pictures of Chad and then you can see what summer Chad looks like. Uh, he's definitely a different looking cat in the winter than the than the summer. In winter he's gotta get all the fluff on and uh, let's do the knicker knot. In the summer he's all skinny. Loses all his big fat fur. Got Chad on the brain here while I'm <laughs> visiting my parents always. All right, let's trim this. Chad is the cat if you were just coming in. <laughs> I don't know who Chad Kitty is yet. All right, that is pretty lined up. I'm happy with that. So in theory, all these seams should be perfectly diagonal. This, this one right here is maybe a little shifted, but just pulling on that a little kind of corrects that. So yeah, I'm liking it. And uh, pressing pressing this will even make it uh, just line up more and be better too, I think. Um, but right now we can just keep it like this. Um, I haven't surrounded, I haven't completely surrounded any of the paper pieces. So like if there was a piece right here, then this piece would be surrounded on each side, but uh, it's not yet. But when it is surrounded, that's when you can pop the papers out. You can wait till the end to pop the papers out, but um, you can, you can, um, do it sooner if you want. So this is all the bulk here. I might just kind of trim some of this. They all, you know, some of it's glue basted, so it should kind of go in a little pinwheel here. I think it will once I putz with it a little bit, but I probably will, um, trim some of this just to reduce the bulk. But, you know, we do have all these points meeting. We got all these seams, so it makes sense that there's just tons of fabric there. All right, we have plenty of time to trim the rest of our pieces. So I think we should do that, um, especially with the, the C pieces, which are the bits that go right here. That's, that's these. Um, I think we should cut those at least because those are the, the um, star fabric and I don't wanna like, not that I would forget, and not like we're gonna pick up this project in the meantime, but I, you know, I like when the pieces stay with the project. So I don't wanna put this back in the bin um, and have them separated from, from this guy. So, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Let's grab the C pieces and then the, all the D pieces, the, there's D pieces and D reverse pieces. That's all these little sharp triangles here. Um, those are all going to be white. So I think we can probably just fold those because there's reverse ones and, um, non-reverse ones and the fabric is, uh, you know, the same on each side. So I think we'll be able to cut these in like two seconds. So that, that'll be good. These ones, I think I'll cut all individually. Okay, so color side down or the right side down. It's a little cut in here. So we're gonna just trim off the edge a little bit. We'll just get these all good enough. Nice big generous seam allowance. That should be fine. All right. I'm just gonna use the same piece. We just need four of these. Let's see. There's some cut bits out of there too. We'll just go like so, I suppose. The corner is gonna have like little flat cuts in that, in theory. Uh, you just don't wanna get too close to the point. All right, let's do two more. All right, feel good about uh, pre-cutting some of these for next time. I think we'll finish this up pretty quick next, uh, next month. It'll be a whole nother month until we work on this again. But we'll have five finished blocks that we can sew um, into the quilt, like we're doing that 
that quilt as you go so soon it is time to it'll be time to just crank on the free motion quilting again that'll be fun kind of feeling feeling the need for some free motion quilting all right now we're officially done with that fabric Excellent. All right. Ugh, got fuzzles all over the place here, getting caught on everything. Out of here. Okay. So here's our four pieces. The thing that we do have to remember about these pieces, and I always forget, is that these are not mirror images. This is like a wider, um, wider angle than this. So we'll just have to pay attention to that when we lay them on our fabric pieces. Although our fabric pieces are cut so big that it doesn't matter. It looks like. So anyway. Here's our uh, four C pieces. I'm just gonna move these C pieces out of the way right away. And uh, the, we're left with D pieces. D pieces and D reverse pieces. So um, that's what DR stands for. Uh, D and D reverse. So there's eight of these. So we should be able to just take the white and fold it a bunch of times and then have, have enough but I do have <laughs> a pretty non-foldable piece of um, fabric here. So maybe that's not as likely. Let's, let's try and do it on a, on a small scale, maybe. Gosh, this might be worth just getting a bigger piece of white out. I, I might do that. I have, lots of, I have lots of the white fabric, and I think this will be a pile easier to just be able to fold, fold an edge a bunch of times. There we go. So that's two pieces worth. This is four pieces worth. I think that'll be good. Do you fit on there? I think you do. All right, let's, let's just cut down the line here. These might be a little short, but I think they'll be fine. All right. Cut an angle up that way. All right, this should be plenty. So those can be tossed and uh, I mean, we do have the, these really flat edges, but I think that'll be fine. And actually on these D pieces, uh oh, we're attached. Let's detach all these. One, two, three, four, okay. So we should have like the D pieces and then if you flip them this way, they'll be the reverse D pieces. Uh, so we should be fine there. Uh, but these are going to be on the edge, so we really only need to, we'll ultimately only need to fold over this edge and this edge. So everything here can just hang off um, and then we'll trim our final block and that, you know, we'll trim that off to our six and a half inches. They'll just be hanging out like, you know, right on the, right on the corner here like this sort of deal. So I think this is great. That's our first batch. And then we just need to do that one more time here. Maybe we'll go at a little bit of an angle so I have more, more um, corner area. So, all right, let's cut down here. Cut our little edge, little folds out. Let's cut down here. All right, and that'll do it. So we got our eight pieces here. Yeah, there's just eight, two, four, six, eight. Yep, all right, good. We're done. Those are our pieces. We have all our shapes here, our remaining shapes, our remaining um, fabrics for those shapes, and our bit that is all completed here. So that is it, everyone. I'm gonna flip you around. Okay, so that went super quick tonight. We got a prep for next time, which is fabulous. And uh, we got this whole center area done. And I, like I said, I was not expecting to really get this far uh, in these just last couple days that we've been working on this, but there we go. All the little inside pieces. Uh, yeah, so let's see, three, we'll have 12 more pieces to go, which is what we have done now. So maybe it will take a, the same amount of time 
um, to do this next time. And the pieces are a little bit smaller. Well, we'll have the pieces cut out already. We don't have to make the templates again. I don't think it'll take the whole week. We'll get these um, on and then we can pop all the pieces out. That'll be the fun bit. And um, yeah, I'm excited. So, oh, four-legged sea star, yep. <laughs> it does look like that, doesn't it? Fun little mouth on this side. Can make it a little origami piece. <laughs> I like it. All right, uh, so next week, uh, starting on Monday, we will be doing the embroidery of the month. So uh, check out penguinandfish.com, uh, the embroidery of the month section on, on that to grab the project for, for next week. And uh, I said next month, I meant next week, I think. Um, and I'm excited. That's the, that's the best when we get to work on some embroidery. So it'll be more handwork, more relaxing work, uh, and it'll be fun. We'll learn how to do the couching stitch which we haven't done here before, I don't think. So that'll be nice. It'll be, um, there's a bunch of techniques. Uh, well, not techniques, but there's a bunch of um, objects you can couch to your fabrics, if, uh, if that makes sense. It'll, it'll make sense when we work on it next week. But all right, thank you guys again. Have a fabulous weekend. Uh, and we'll be both on Facebook and YouTube next week again. See you later, you guys. Good night.